Knowing when to approach a lead and when to start the sales conversation is critical to actually making that sale happen. So that's why it's important that you understand HubSpot's life cycle stages, lead statuses and deal stage and that you use them properly. So in this video, I'm gonna show you an easy way to visualize and plan each of these to make sure that you're using the right one at the right time so that you can see exactly what's in your pipeline and manage your leads effectively. Understanding where your leads are in the sales cycle and then focusing your attention to those that are further down the funnel is crucial to having an effective sales operation. But just how do you monitor and manage that? Well, HubSpot has got three things that's gonna help you. Life cycle stage, which is where someone is in the sales funnel and their qualification status. Lead status, which is what you're planning to do with that lead. And then deals or opportunities, which are actually separate records that you create when somebody is more actively engaged in a, the sales process. For example, when you're actually having those sales conversations where you're planning meetings, raising quotes and so on. But there's a problem. And what we often see with clients is they often get these confused and mixed, mixed up and they often start deals far too early in the sales cycle. So let's make it easy for you. What I'm going to do is to take you through a typical sales and marketing funnel and show you how we use the life cycle stages, lead status and deals at each stage. So we have a funnel like this one and the main stages, the blocks that you see, are defined by the life cycle stage property. And that's a property that's on both the contact and the company records within HubSpot. And generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep them aligned so that they're both the same. And that can be done automatically by a simple setting that we can change. So to do that, what we do is we just go over to the, your settings cog. And then on the left hand side, we select companies. And then you'll see, uh, see it says here, sync lifecycle stages. Now back to the funnel. HubSpot has six predefined stages that we're going to use. The first stage is subscriber. And that is someone who has subscribed to your blog. Then we have lead, and that's someone who fills out one of your forms on your website. And for the next two, MQL and SQL, it's really just down to you to decide how you're gonna use them, if at all. I've got some clients who use one, some both, some none at all. So let me give you an example of how we use this. When someone fills out one of our forms, we classify them directly as an MQL. And that's because all of our ebooks are related to either sales or marketing and therefore the business, um, the business is showing an interest and for us it's worth us looking at them. So my BDM will then look at the lead and do some initial research and see what type of business it is, what size it is, as well as the person's role. And if it fits our criteria, the criteria that we've defined, she'll mark the lead as an SQL and then start make, trying to make contact. Now there's no right or wrong here as to how you do it, just make sure it's documented so that everybody that's using the system is aware of the definitions and they know who's responsible for following up and any actions that are needed. We use a spreadsheet that clearly defines each of these stages and you can see that here. So here for example we've got our definitions, uh, we've got the tools that we're going to use within HubSpot, the trigger events and whose responsibility it is. Now if you want a copy of this spreadsheet then uh, there's a link in the description below where you can access it. Now the next life cycle stage is opportunity and this is when you actually raise a deal record. And a common mistake that we often see is that deals are raised far too early in the sales funnel. And we even see deals being raised before the sales team have even spoken to the prospect. Really, you should only raise a deal when you think that there's a realistic chance of you doing business with that lead. They should already be qualified through the MQL and SQL stages. And before you raise a deal, you should be in a position where you've got enough information where you could add in a potential deal amount, any products that might be a good fit, and a potential close date. Again, to cite our example, once our BDM has done a research, she identifies the leads as an SQL, she then attempts to make contact with an initial connect call. 
and her goal on this call is to see what problem the person has and whether they need help and want our help in solving that. And on that call, she'll be looking to book an exploratory call. And this is where we dig deeper and see if there's a potential fit. So we only raise the deal once an exploratory call has been booked. Now, you, you, you've probably got a different sales process to us. But my advice is that you only raise a deal when you're actively engaged with that person in the sales process. So the next life cycle stage and the final one is, of course, everybody's favorite. It's the customer. This is when the opportunity gets moved to the closed one status and they have spending some money with you. So that's the life cycle stage. Now let's have a look at the lead status. The lead status is a property that's on the contact record and you can customize the values to suit you. And generally speaking, lead statuses should be used to monitor and plan what is happening with your SQLs. For example, when you have a new SQL, you can change the lead status to new or to be researched if that's what's happening next. Now what I'm showing you here are just some of the default values, but you can add in more. And once your salesperson is engaged and got to the point where a deal record is created, we can move the lead status to open deal, for example, and then, uh, and then use the deal record to progress the opportunity. And this can be automated, for example, moving the lead stage to the to be researched when we get a new download of an ebook or open deal when a deal record is created. Now we've set up a dashboard where we can monitor and see at a glance the status of some of our leads. And that means that not only can I see it, but my BDM, my salesperson, can use this as their working page. So they come in each day, they can see the statuses of their leads, they can click on this detail, find the actual contacts and make it easy for them to surface the information and what to work from. Now, if you'd like to understand and learn how to create uh, uh, the automations and set up a dashboard yourself, there's a video we've recorded where the link is in the description box below. Now, we've said that you can customize uh, these values. So how do you do that? So what we do is we go over to our settings and the, uh, in the settings, we go down to properties and it's a contact property. So what we do is we search in here for lead status and you can see it comes up there. And if we press edit, you can see the values that have been set and you can change these to meet your needs. So you can delete some of these and add in other options. So now let's move on to the opportunity or deal, deal stages. Now, as we've discussed, a deal record is a separate record type and you can set the deal stages to match your sales process. For example, you might have a stage uh, when you book a meeting, hold a meeting, send a proposal, or have closed one and closed loss statuses. Or in this example, there's a few extra stages, qualified, qualified to buy, presentation schedule, decision made, uh, maker bought in and so on. Now that again, there's no right or wrong, yeah, but my advice is not to overcomplicate this and keep it simple as you can. So how do we go and change the, lead, uh, the deal stages? Well, what we do is in the property settings, this time we go down to the left-hand side, we go to objects and then deals. And across here, you've got pipelines. Now, depending upon your package that you've got with HubSpot, you can have multiple pipelines. So for example, we have here. Um, but if you've got, uh, if you're not got the, set, the sales pro package, you may only have one pipeline. But what you can then do is change the different stages to suit you. So you can see here, I've got different pipelines and they've got different stages to suit, uh, to, to mirror our sales process for each of these. Okay, to recap, we've looked at the differences between life cycle stages, lead status and deal stages and how to change them all. So if you found this video useful, then please give us a thumbs up. Likewise, if you'd like to be notified about new content that we put out, then hit the subscribe button. Also in the description box, you'll find a link to the Hublite newsletter where we send out all the new content we publish. We'll see you soon.